Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Sunny Hangout. I'm your host, Francelli Chapman, and I have a wonderful, wonderful guest on the show today that I'm going to introduce in just a second because, you know, it's time for the Sully update. Episode 18. Jeez, we're moving, we're plowing along. The fall is here. It's November, my birthday month. Yay, I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm like doing extra claps just because like I'm super excited that it's my birthday month. So speaking of birthdays and New Year's and just it's always a time of reflection for me and I'm super, super blessed and thankful that Sally's Hangout, um, I can't believe is already like four months in. I started this in June over the summer, an idea that just came up and I, I decided to do this. So as I'm embarking on my new year of life, I wanted to make sure I started this show and did a November show that has a lot to do with who you are. Um, every year we reflect on ourselves as artists and ask ourselves, man, why did we decide to make this journey and be artists and choose this hard life of constant rejection? Do we, are we masochists? Do we just love being hurt? Like, what? Um, and, and definitely, you know, as you get older, you start really getting to know yourself and what you really want out of life. And so I think our journey as artists is constantly about self-evaluation and getting to know self. So I wanted to have someone on the show that kind of coordinates with that. So I'm really excited to have um, Christian Jones on the show. Say hi, Christian, to everyone. Hey, everyone. Hey, hey, hey. I'm excited <laughs> to be on the show. Yeah. Yes, creator of the Who I Am series. So we're going to get into exactly what all of that is about. But just a quick little Selly update um, on what's going on. This month is going to be crazy for me. I'm going to do a lot of traveling. I'm going to the Dominican Republic for my birthday. I'm going down to D.C. Uh, my little brother just moved, so having housewarming for him. So just really, really, um, you know, Thanksgiving's coming, being thankful and grateful for family time. So it's going to be a lot of focusing on my family. But in terms of creative um, go on sellytheactress.com because I just wrote a blog post on everything that's happening, the release of my music video, the Dr. Oz show, the web series I'm in. Like, There's just so much stuff that's happening, um, and I'm so thankful. But enough about me. Let's get into this. <laughs> we have um, Christian Jones on the show, and if you want to ask him any questions or comment or like be part of this hangout and part of this conversation, do not hesitate to make sure to hit us up on Twitter at Sully Hangout or hit us up on the YouTube page and join the convo. So, Who I Am series. Kershaw and I, we met here in New York, but you're you're actually right now in Kansas City, right? Yeah, I'm in Kansas City. Checking in all the way from Kansas City. <laughs> but we met here in New York. Um, I was very blessed to connect with you through uh, a wonderful community of artists and actors, the Actor Circle. I'm um, created by my good friend of mine, Siddiqui Fofana. And um, and I got to get to know you and know about your show, the Who I Am series, which is so amazing how you decided to do this. So tell folks a little bit about exactly what is Who I Am and how did it get started? Where did you birth the idea to put together this amazing kind of documentary web series? Oh, man. Okay, let's see where I can start at. Um... Let me just tell you what the Who I Am series is. It's just a platform for people out there to share their story. Um, a lot of people out there are walking with masks on, and I was one of those um, before my mother died. And, you know, we hold in all this pain, and we hold in all these stories, and we feel like our story doesn't really matter. So last August is when the series started. Um, I was sleeping. I came back to school after my mother passed. Um, rest in peace, Shanita Guyton. She passed February 6, 2012, and I really... I really got depressed. Like I was depressed for a long time. I had a great support system, but me growing up, I had to be a man. That's what I felt like. I felt like I couldn't express myself. You know, I had it all together, but I really didn't have it all together. Um, from all the way from February, all the way to May, I lost sight of myself. Um, depression is a real thing, and it's very serious. Like I'm a very happy-go person, but during those couple months. I wasn't myself no more. So from February all the way to May, I went down to the lowest point of my life. And May 28th, 2012, I tried to commit suicide. Um, wow. yeah. And it's, a, it's kind of emotional to think about because it's my first time ever telling my story, ever. 
um, um, just you know, to the public. So I tried to commit suicide, and I woke up in the hospital, and I went to a mental hospital, and it was kind of hard for me because I work with at-risk youth. Um, I was a counselor myself, a supervisor, and not to be able to help them, and I couldn't help myself, you know what I mean, so I isolated myself. So being inside that hospital, um, you know, a lot of people are kind of angry a little bit, you know what I mean, because I didn't reach out. I had those people around me, but I kept it in, you know. I kept it in. I didn't take the time to really talk to somebody. So when I was in the hospital, um, my brother called me, um, James Guyton. He said, God told me whatever you're going to go through in there is for a reason, and whatever you're going through, you're going to be delivered from it. I really didn't know. Before that time, I I had it. I had a nice job. You know what I mean? I had a nice car, a nice apartment. I had everything going for myself. But after my mom died, I lost it all. You know, and inside that hospital, I was delivered. You know, and God told me I want to be fully for me, or not be fully for me. So during that time, I tried. I picked myself up together, and I decided to come back to school. I came back to school last August. I was supposed to play football again because this school that I'm going to now, William Joe College, was a school I played football for four years ago. So, you know, I tried to come back, get a scholarship again, but there was NCAA and NCAA denied me. <laughs> so I was just a regular student. But one time I was sleeping and I had this vision and God told me to start Who I Am series. And I told him no. Honestly, I told him no in my conversation. I said, God, you know, I'm an actor. You know what I mean? That's what I love to do. I love right. the stage. I love to film it. You're telling me to pick up a camera and Document people's stories. I do that already. I'm counseling people. I'm talking to people. And he told me to do it. So I went to the library and picked up a small little HD camera. I didn't know how to use it. So guess what? I started my series on my iPhone. Literally <laughs> my iPhone. Um, trying to work that camera, I had my roommate, which is Daniel Granger, episode two. I was just asking him questions, you know? and asking where he's from and asking different things of this. But during that time, I didn't know the direction God wanted me to go because I wasn't listening at that time. I still was a little rebellious. I just knew I had something that was excited. You know what I mean? I was excited to do. So literally from August all the way until September, I stayed inside the laboratory, which I call the lab, you know, the editing room, and taught myself how to edit, taught myself how to shoot. I was on YouTube for hours and hours and hours. People said, Kirsten, this is where you stay, 8 o'clock in the morning to 1 o'clock in the morning, that's where I was at, teaching myself. God said, um, God said it was going to test the nation. You know, it was going to test the nation. I didn't understand what he said. Um, I didn't understand what he meant at that time, you know. And so I taught myself, taught myself. I was discouraged, you know. Um, being around people in the industry, being around all the great things going on, I said, God, I can't, I can't do this. I don't have the, the equipment. I don't have the money. You know, he's telling me, hey, you, I gave you all these gifts. Go ahead and learn. So I learned, like literally, so I sat down for months and months and months and just learned through the process as in trying to release the first episode. So the first episode was produced on my cell phone in a small little HD camera. So if people go back and see it, they see the different qualities from now to there. But I really wanted to sit down and understand somebody's story. My mask was lift up when my mother died. And I really do want to take the time because we say we want to listen to people, but it takes that one time to sit down with somebody and they just want to share one thing and they're healed from that, you know? And you can save somebody's life by sitting down and telling that story. It wasn't like I couldn't tell my story, but I was too afraid to tell my story. I was too macho. I had it all together, but I had the support system. I isolated myself. So it really started from God, really. It was a vision. It was a vision, and God told me to do it. And I wanted to call it <laughs> and it went to who I am. And I never knew it would be this big it is now. Like, I, I really, I didn't. I started from an iPhone, you know, but I'm really tapping into these people's life because I want to go into drama therapy, and that's going to go to NYU for drama therapy to get my master's. So I always wanted to see how I can enter this, you know, keep them together, you know, drama, mm -hmm. theater, drama, theater, and I found that through video I can do that. So it was, it's was it been a very hard process, you know, sitting down telling these people's stories, and it's a healing for myself. So that's really where it started. It started from God telling me to do this, and I had to learn, and I had to really press myself to do this, you know, and he told me he's going to put the people around me to really 
get me to the level where make I can, it happens. Yeah, make it happen. So, okay, so started to get inside my <laughs> door. It's a beautiful thing. I mean, I congratulate you. It's one of the hardest things as artists. I mean, I have so so many things were going through my head as you were sharing your beautiful story about what it really means to be a selfless artist. You know, we all want to make it and we all have our moments of self-doubt and being around all these successful people and, and asking ourselves, what does it really take to take it to the next level? And it's like you said, when you truly, we are storytellers. That's what we are. Like we're choosing a career to tell people stories. And how can you really do that effectively if you don't take the time to truly connect with other human beings? You know, like some of the greatest actors on the planet they go out and research. They talk to people who are similar to the characters that they're playing. They get inside their heads. like, And that takes real human interaction, real human compassion. Um, in order to really tap into the truth of someone's story, you have to go there with them, be there with them in order to convey that truthfully on a stage or on, on screen. So I think it's a it's a... It's kind of this mysterious blessing that you were given with the Who I Am series because now you're able to tap into all these souls and all these beautiful stories that you get to see. I'm going to um, give you guys who are watching Sally's Hangout a little clip from one oh, of his yeah. episodes so you can oh, see. Like, it's truly um, amazing how people you know, are so comfortable on the camera with you. Like You, you make people really want to share who they are, and it takes – certain special people to be able to pull that off. You know, Oprah gets to do that, you know, and yeah. th there are only certain people that get to get people to spill their guts out. You know, not everyone wants to do that. Um, and like you said, it inspires someone. So I just want to say that it's really big of you, and I, you know, I really congratulate you okay. for stepping away from yourself. Because, yes, as actors, we do get kind of greedy, and we want that that fix you know our itch is that being in front of the camera and being on stage but you come to find that the collective of the community comes to be very important if you want longevity in this business and that's also why I started Sully's Hangout like I realized that it's bigger than me it's bigger than uh, this career that I want to have which is it can't just be all about me 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 and making it big and being on the red carpet like there has to be this real interaction amongst the community so I'm going to give you guys a little clip from uh, the the Who I Am series that you did with our friend, our actor friend. Who, oh, yeah, I went to meet with you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Ziki Fofana, who's uh, an amazing actor oh, in the community, man. young star. He's going to yeah. be amazing and probably very surprised when he finds out that I put him on the spot on the show. <laughs> <laughs> it's already around the world already. So. <laughs> Right, like he, he's yeah. like, Sully, you didn't even tell me you were going to put me on the show. But I want to show you guys just kind of like a little bit of what we're talking about and what was created. So I'm going to go ahead and kick this up for you. All right. My name is Siddiqui Fofana, I'm 23 years old, and I'm also a professional actor. Siddiqui <laughs> Fofana, let's see. He's humble, he's dedicated, he's determined. You know, he's a people person, he's someone who takes your problems and make it his, even if he doesn't have to deal with it. Um, he's someone who's driven, you know. Um, he's someone who's built with awareness, you know. I, I, I feel like I represent a whole community, a whole group of people. You know, Siddiqui uh, in Arabic means honest loyalty, you know, and I feel like uh, I resemble that, you know. No, I, like I said, uh, people always tell me my personality is very infectious. You know, people, I have a history of people just liking me the minute I speak or, you know, I've had people say my presence is very big, even if I don't say anything. You know, so I, I feel like um, Siddiqui Fofana is a collection of um, people of all creed, color, and religion. You know, I, 
you know, I have friends who are Indian, Puerto Rican, Dominican, and Chinese, you know, Hispanic, you know, black, it, it doesn't matter, you know, I am a reflection of them, I'm a reflection of my ancestors, those who couldn't get far in their life, those who passed away, whether it was slavery or, you know, um, being treated with abuse or whatever, I feel like I'm a reflection of them. And wow. Wow. That's, that's part of who I am, guys. So, like, Christian, did you, like, again, I mean, you said you started telling us the story of, like, I mean, again, I got to give a clap again. <laughs> this is Ziki Fofana. I mean, if you want to see the whole entire episode, which you should, you should definitely go on whoiamseries.com. Um, and it's easy. You can just put on Google who I am, and it'll come up. So it's series. And there's how many episodes? I think there's nine now. I just released one on the fourth. I just released a new one on the fourth. So nine episodes. Nine episodes. Yeah. Not too much to catch up on. So you guys can get on there and catch up. But it's such beautiful stories. I mean, Siddiqui, of course, I chose because he's an actor. But there are all kinds of people on the show. I mean, like a full. She's a full-time mom and a college student, balancing teaching folks that it's possible to do it all. I mean, you have like all kinds of stories being told. I mean, is that has that always been the vision that you wanted to not just do artists? You kind of wanted to do the whole spectrum. How did you start going about what stories you wanted to tell? Oh man! Uh, so in the beginning, <clears throat> being on a college campus, you know, um, especially school I go to that's predominantly white, um, it's a lot of people that keep to themselves, different groups and things of that sort. So I wanted to really tell stories around people that walk around and you can't even say hi to the next person because the next person put their head down, you know, and you're in the same classroom. Our school is only 1,200 pe people, a very prestigious school, and we don't even talk to each other, <laughs> you know. We don't take the time to talk to each other. So I really don't pick the episodes. Like, literally, what, what the crazy thing is is I didn't initially plan for an episode to come out every single month, Sally. Every single month, an episode has been coming out, and I made it able for people on the internet to send their stories in or email me. You know, that's how Kelly Brock was episode six. I didn't know this young lady, and I didn't know she went to my school. You wow. know, and she said, she said, I seen the first four episodes, and it really touched me. And I didn't know who she was, so I googled her. You know, I googled her and seen her on Facebook, and I said, Wow, you go to my school, but. I really don't. I really don't pick them, Sally. Like, I really, cause there's. I get a lot of emails all the time, and I wish eventually I will. I would be able to fly around the world and tell all these different stories, which I will. You know. Yes. Uh, eventually, but I really sit down to see if this is what they really want to do. I ask them, why now? Why do you want to share your story? The motto of our story is everyone has a story. One story will touch a million, and millions will see themselves in one. Mm -hmm. So. It doesn't matter what backdrop you come from, you know. So I ask these people that want to be on it, because a lot of people, and I'll tell you about that later throughout the episode. A lot of people, like you said, it's hard for them to be transparent to tell this story. It's hard for them, so a lot of people are not gonna tell their story in depth, you know. So I have another avenue for those individuals like that. But when those people come in and really want to shed some tears, because during this during this episodes and during this interview process, I interview these people before we even start. And I ask them, is this what you want to do? It's not cracked up what you be. You see all the, the glamorness and stuff like that. I said, behind these walls, you're coming to me because you want to share a story you've been holding in or you haven't told it a lot or you feel like it doesn't matter because mm -hmm. this person comes for, quotation mark, the hood, the ghetto, and you come from a prestigious family, but yet you feel like you stressing on your getting an A and almost committed suicide is different than a person from a hard back. Like, no, they're the same thing. I'm sorry because we're talking about the mental psyche of a person that really breaks a person down. So, mm -hmm. how I and, pick, yeah, go ahead. No, I'm sorry. I was just gonna say about like mental health is such a huge thing in our communities, all of our communities. We can all talk about it, but it's not being addressed, and it's not being addressed. I feel on the magnitude that it should, and and it's a perfect example when we even see in our own community the Disney Channel actor, like when we. I mean, he shot himself. Like, that that's really, like, 
mm-hmm. a, a clear act of I do not want to be here any longer. And again, we get on social media, on our Instagrams, on our Facebook, and we all project happy lives or mm-hmm. successful lives or whatever, and we compare ourselves to people who are projecting something that you don't even know if that's their real life. Exactly. You know, and you're like, oh, man, they're so happy, and they got it all going on, and look at this guy. He's in Hollywood and on the Disney Channel, and then what happens? He's gone, yeah. you know, because, again, he had all this stuff inside him, you know, that he wasn't sharing with people. Maybe if someone would know what he was going through, someone mm-hmm. could have stepped in to help him, and so I think it's important that as a community, I mean, you don't have to necessarily get on Sally's Hangout or on the Who I Am series and spill your guts out or get on Oprah, but talk to people. You know, it's important that throughout this journey, especially when you choose to be an artist, you know, a lot of the people that check out Sally's Hangout are artists, and this is a hard road that we chose, and there are going to be moments where you want to give up. There are going to be moments where this isn't easy, like getting rejected on an everyday basis, mm-hmm. feeling like you're not tall enough, not short enough, skinny enough, fat mm-hmm. enough. You know, like there's all these things that tell us we're not good enough. Mm-hmm. When you are, you know, you're, you were made perfectly the way you are, you know? Like people tell me all the time, like, oh, you know, my gap and this and that, and I'm great for theater, but I might not be able to cross over to TV and film because, you know, my gap is really big, but... I I have a great inspiration of a wonderful actress, Uzo Aduba, who's on Orange is the New Black, and she's a phenomenal actress, and she has a gap, and she's doing her thing, which is, you know, why I did that video about Orange is the New Black, like my dedication to her on Halloween, because it's like, here's someone who probably was told a lot in her life that she wasn't, quote-unquote, pretty enough or good enough, and now she's one on one of the hit shows, so it just goes to show that you can create your own journey, your own path, and who you are. Um, to go back to the Who I Am series, who you are is part of your journey, and is what's going to set you apart from everyone else, and and is going to inspire a whole bunch of other people. So it's important to share your story. So I'm glad that we're doing this and that we're here and <laughs> we're doing this show. I'm so happy if you guys are. Tuning in with us, I just want to say make sure you hit us up on Twitter at Sully Hangout or leave a comment on the YouTube page if you have a question or a comment for Kirshen or myself. Hang out with us. We're hanging here. We'll be here for a little while longer. Um, please go on the YouTube page, backslash Sully Hangout. If you just got into the episode kind of late and you want to watch it from the beginning, it'll be there. Um, in a few hours' time, as soon as the live broadcast is over, you can watch all this episode and all past episodes on the Sally Hangout page. So that's that's kind of amazing how like your show is just kind of like it's working itself out. I feel like that happens the same with this show too. Like I don't I try to plan guests, but sometimes it just happens that certain things just come into motion, which is a testament that there are things bigger than ourselves that kind of work in our favor. Um, but how do you feel this journey has helped you as an artist? Man, so when doing the series, um, I have another, which is crazy, you're talking about artists and everything of that sort. I have a drama web series that's going to be coming out next year called Life Through an Artist. And it's a drama web series, you know, web shows and stuff like that. And we're working very hard behind the scenes, getting some great actors. And the reason why I did that is based on the stories I was hearing throughout my life, my period of time, struggling artists or struggling dancers or struggling photography or just struggling person in general. But I took four different people that was in the industry and made their dialogues related to everybody's story, you know. So... How this helped me out for my for myself as an artist is I understand that there's hope out there, you know? I understand that my story does matter, you know? Um, to go back to Siddiqui, I went to New York, you know, I was there for the whole summer and I was glad I met you guys. And he came to me and told me he wanted to be on a series. I said, Great, no problem. We set it up, we went to the Bronx, you know what I mean, and I did it at one of the actors' house, you know with the back to writing the actor's house and I mean how powerful that was and if people can look back and see that when I did an intro to a series 
it was one moment of time when I was asking him certain questions and he couldn't answer it and he broke down and I tell people this is unscripted people think it's scripted. this is unscripted you know I'm really tapping into their psyche I'm really tapping and seeing what their story is I asked them how is the pressures of being a firstborn you know being from African descent and he broke down and it was one of the most greatest moments that I ever experienced at that time seeing how even though he had the success that he has and people look him up, priests look him up, all the success, the shows he's been on, the wars that he has, he was still struggling with this one thing. And he said, me being the firstborn and me, you know, making it for my, my, my family and things, I said, I feel like I still failed. I feel like I'm a still failure. And he broke down. He broke down right then and there. And I said, me going through what I, I'm going through as an artist, I haven't even got the success that Siddiqui has got yet. You know what I mean? People see me doing this. I love acting. I, have, I wasn't able to act like I am now because I went back to school. I was acting for four years locally, professionally, been in some nice shows. But when I came back to school, that, that drives me, Sally. That drives me. It doesn't even have to be an a artist. You know what I mean? It doesn't have to be, though. Those stories have empowered me for my character I bring to the camera, my character I bring to the stage. That's the reason why I do drama. Because it's therapy. You know, so that's a question, which I think I did. That brings a stronger self to me. You know what I mean? It brings all these different characters I can use for the better, but they're real. They're they're I really don't have to tap in into my imagination because they're real. Mm -hmm. You know? So my imagination is coming from past and you know what I'm saying? But when people are able to see me on stage again, see me on TV shows and movies, it's gonna be dynamic. Because they're going to see how the Who I Am series blossom, And you guarantee that anything I do later on, anything I'm going to develop, is coming from these stories. So I feel like I'm going to be an even stronger actor. And I can't wait to act to see you guys in New York again and stuff like that. Because I graduate in 17 yes. days. 17 days I graduate. <laughs> you are graduating. That's awesome. And I will be and out. You will be in New York. I can't wait yeah. till you're here and we can collaborate and then yeah. I can be on the Who I Am series. Uh, yeah. It don't matter. I fly out there and put you <laughs> up whenever you're ready. It doesn't matter. Because it's, it's real. Because it takes a lot for somebody to say that, you know, um, to hear, to, to really tell their story. So people, to tell a little bit more about it, I have a documentary series I do and that's the hour and 15 minute interview that I do with somebody and I condense it to 30 minutes, you know. But Sadiqis is an hour because there's no way I could have condensed, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Or another one, episode eight, is an hour as well. You know, and the recent one is about 45 minutes. So I have other avenues I do called the I Am Who I Am Because nationwide campaign I'm doing when I'm going to different cities, different communities, asking them, what are you doing in your community to impact the community? So I have different avenues. I have a lot of avenues because some people might not want to share their story. They're not ready yet. That's fine. So I have I Am Who I Am Because, and we're touching on certain subjects of what they're doing in the community. So... The first episode of that has released too, and I, I did Tabon Hemmings from New York, big you know artist, and I did him. He does creative war culture, anti-bullying, obesity campaign uh, concert, benefit concert. So I got to do him. I released it um, not too long ago, but like I said, it's it's just amazing. It's amazing to really see. It's overwhelming, Sally. It is overwhelming. Like I started from <laughs> nothing. I started from nothing and seeing how it's touching the world right now. You know, so. Um, and that's, you know, honestly, that's what it's about. It's about really, really having that faith that this little thing that you start is going to blossom, you know, in whatever way it goes to truly just have faith and belief, you know, and really, really taking joy in the process and in the journey, you know, like. It's not going to be everything you want at once. It's not going to all come fast. And a lot of artists today, and I've said it on other episodes too, you know, we get into the business and we think it's, we want it right now. We, we right. live in such an instantaneous society. We get things quick, fast, and this isn't the career where you're going to get things quick and fast. So it's very important to finding joy in this journey and in this process. And what I think it's so beautiful about, what you said about how it's helped you grow as an artist by hearing other people's stories, I say that all the time about that's why it's important to really truly, like this business we all know it's about relationships, you yeah. know, like directors, producers, they hire their friends, the people they like to work with, they like being yeah. around, 
you could be an A star talent, but if you have a bad attitude, I don't want you on set for 14 hours with me. Mm -hmm. So it's this fine line of yes, network and, and get to know people, but don't try to build false relationships. Because if you're just networking to get to know someone, just to see how they can help you move along in the business, that's not a genuine building of a relationship. Like really start planting seeds and then water those seeds and really foster your garden of connections. And that's then you'll see your garden truly grow. But it's not going to happen if you're just like, picking random seeds and just throwing them everywhere and thinking that you're going to have this beautiful garden. You know, you have to really take the time to really like not let these plants die to use that metaphor. And, and once you really start fostering those true connections and those true relationships, you're going to see the beauty of the community that you've created and how those relationships, half of the people on my show, you know, people tell me all the time, how did you get, so and so on your show. Oh, man. And this happened. I was excited you asked me to come on. I'm like, <laughs> you got all these people. I'm nobody. That's what I felt like. I said, I'm nobody. <laughs> you know, and I tell people all the time, it's all from the relationships I have. And and then someone else told me too, oh, Sally, you know, I kind of want to come on your show, but I don't feel like what I do is big enough. And I'm like, yeah. whoa, this is all inclusive. It's about the entire community from someone who's on Broadway, who's, you know, in a motion picture to someone who's starting a little project on their iPhone like it's important to talk about all the levels we're on all of our stories because those people who are on the red carpet once upon a time they were an extra in something you know like when we look at those people remember they had to earn their stripes too and so whenever you feel discouraged I just I'm kind of being kind of preachy and breathy this episode but I just feel that's who, who we are. That's I feel who we are. right. I feel really <laughs> great, you know, coming into yeah. this new year of my life, and I really, really feel like it's a time to really, like, be accepting, you know, your present moment and enjoying that present moment instead of constantly, like, thinking about when I get to the red carpet, when I get, and focusing on that, because we never know if that's truly the destiny that we'll get there. You know, we may not. And, and Viola Davis, she's such a... She's like my mentor in my brain, yeah. you know. Um, yeah. And in her interviews, she talks about all the time, like when she was up for the Oscar, how like she thought that she would be happy when she got there, and then she got there and she was miserable because she looked around and figured out how alone she was. And so, it's just all circling back to again knowing who you are and surrounding yourself around people and really healing is going to help you tell these stories because as a storyteller you're gonna have to be vulnerable you can't wanna play you know these I mean I can't even think like imagine if you had to play a role as a rapist yeah. or you know a pedophile like these are really really intense scenes and intense moments that you're gonna have to do and you're gonna have to go some places and dig real deep that if you're not able to allow yourself to get there it's gonna make it really hard to to be the truthful artist that we all really want to be like ultimately we all just want to tell a story authentically so and there's story there's stories on there too like you said like episode 2 i have daniel granger which man, he talked about molestation and that the whole entire thing inside his family him getting molested when he was younger you have episode 3 carrie hill she talks about the same thing and while her dad's in prison there for the rest of his life happened when she's 11 years old so you have these stories that people are not trying to listen to you know, I keep this is this is my saying. We're all busy. You can take a minute to talk to somebody. We are all busy. We have technology. We have a text. We have something. We can take the time. And I'm here to inspire all those that have encountered with me. That's it. That's why everything I post is inspirational. If that's me writing or doing a quote for somebody else or or praising somebody else, I'm here to help us grow as a body, a community, as human beings. You know, so I try to tell people. I want to tell your story too, you know, and I'm going to get to the point when I'm be able to bless those around me that feel like they want to give up on their craft, on their art, you know what I mean? They want to give up on their dreams and say, no, keep going. You're going to be fine. You got somebody like me and I keep telling people, it's going to be a time when I'm be able to bless those around me. If it's on directing, if it's a movie, if it's whatever. I wrote something not too long ago. I don't have the credibility right now, but I do have the faith to keep going. That's what fuels me. You know what I mean? And that's what 
the connections I'm getting right now. You know, we're talking about connections, and I hope she's watching it. Um, we have uh, Ashley Nicole, the one, the found creator of Squareberry. Came into my life. Yeah, she's amazing. Came into my life when I was here because she was working around the community. She didn't have to work here. She's from this from this town, and she was right here, and I was doing it. She said, I want to help you. And everything that you guys see is from her. Everything you see, my branding, my graphics, everything you guys see when I'm posting, that is from her. And she's been there from day one. You can even go on my YouTube and see a video when, she's, when I interviewed her myself. I said, why do you be around this? You know, Be transparent, too. It's like a three-minute interview. And she's been there from day one. Those connections I got. Sarah Fletcher, those connections I got. My wife, sorry, I had to give a shout out to my wife, Shabisha Jones, my rock, the one who's been there since the beginning, that sees me sweat, that sees me work so hard behind the scenes, that sees me trying to implement all these programs, that sees me. Those are the connections you're talking about, Sally, that you're going to get those connections within your family and outside. You know, people are giving you a, a chance. You know what I mean? So I said, I won't. I already told myself, Sally, that I'm willing to fail. I'm willing to sacrifice telling these people stories. I don't need the limelight. You will see the limelight, whatever you think that is in society. You will see me on there because I'm working hard together, but that's not what that's not what fuels me. What fuels me is this moment right here talking to you. That fuels me. You taking the time to even say, hey, Kersian, I want you to be on my show. That is amazing. That is amazing. You know, and you to pay attention to so we can really bring them up, you know, as artists. So like I said, it's it's just amazing to be able to sit down and hear all these stories, you know, and these people get healed. These people struggle. These people get healed, Sally. If you give it, have a session around these people, they don't, I'm fine. I'm ready to do it. Here I go. And they get into that room and they're like, a big boulder is one inside the head. I say, you all right? I need a moment. You cool? You know? It's not it's not easy. I'm not here to hear the surface. Mm -hmm. I'm here to looking down because you contacted me. I didn't contact you. And I know it's hard to tell your story. You know? And I'm here, I'm willing to wait. The last episode that people can see, episode nine, it took me about three and a half weeks to tell her story because she wasn't ready at that time until she came to me and said, I'm ready. You know? So that's amazing to sit down and hear these people's stories. And really hear them, Sally, not just another day. I don't want to call this fad. I don't want to be the next MTV, True Life. I want to be one-on-one -on -one like this. I can do a little edit, a different question that, to keep the eye to the public because a lot of people are lazy just to take two minutes to hear a story, but they watch somebody twerking. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Two minutes to see Sally doing Sally's hangout, and they'll watch something else that's crap, a fight, and war star hip-hop. For three mm -hmm. minutes, but seeing the substance of somebody that's trying to do something in the community, they won't take their time to do it. I say, I will. I will take the time to sit down with that person without the limelight. You know what I mean? I will do that. To touch somebody like you, to touch the next person has been an episode for people tweeting, people wearing my t-shirts. That's amazing. People around wearing your t-shirts. You know what I mean? And move it. Like, what do you say about that? People around the world wearing your t-shirt to say, we support that movement because who I am is this. You know what I mean? So... That's amazing to really sit down and hear these stories, and I'm excited. Like, I'm so excited right now. I can't even stand still to even talk about it because that's what drives me, man. That's, I love telling stories. That's why I, I do drama and psychology. You know what I mean? That's the reason why I do it because I like the psychological aspect of people being on theater. You know what I mean? Of people being on, um, being on TV or whatever. You know, so I include that in everything that I do. You should be excited because it's a – it's an amazing and beautiful movement, which is why I had to ask you to be on the show. I mean, come on. Like, the Who I Am series, it's just, it's beautiful, it's touching, it's inspiring. And Sally's Hangout, that's what I want to do on Sally's Hangout, is to touch people and inspire them. And so it was just a great meeting of the minds to have you on the show and for folks to, you know, to know who you are. I think you're a beautiful spirit, you know, um, and it's in the, it's, I always find that, you know, amazing men have amazing women right behind them. Yeah. So, of course, shout yeah. out to your wife, um, who has to be an amazing woman herself. Thank because you. I think we all we all need that. You know, as much as we live in a society, like you said, you, you when you talked about your mother, you know, I lost my father, and, and we, 
we do feel like society tells us that we have to walk around and act like we got it all together. We don't need anybody. And that's not true. We wouldn't be put on this planet around all these people if we did not need human interaction, a human touch, a human like people don't realize like how far it it goes when you say good morning to someone yeah. or truly ask someone how was your day. Not just it's funny because I was on the phone with a friend, which I can't say he'd kill me if I <laughs> said his identity, but I was on the phone with him and I talked to him about, you know, he tells me people talk to me all the time about their problems and how they're feeling and who they are and I'm a great listener, but when it comes time for me to say how I feel, mm -hmm. no one's very interested. Exactly. You know, and he's like, they're not really listening and he's like, I, I don't take it personal because I know they're not doing it on purpose, but he's like, they'll ask me how my day is and when I'm really... You know, people just expect you to say, oh, my day is fine, or my day went bad. You know, simple. They keep it surface. But when you really unload to someone, like, how your day really was, no one wants that. No one's ready for that. People don't really want that. And so what is about, what, what do we have to do as a community to turn that around? You know, and I think that these movements, that's why it's so important for us to support them, to be a part of them, because, again, we have been conditioned that basketball wives and all these other reality shows where we're tearing each other down is amazing. It's entertaining. Like, we love it. Like, it's just, and to me, you know, and people say, well, what about scandal? Because I love me some scandal. <laughs> but, you know, like, I, I think it's a little different when I know that for sure that this is scripted, this is fiction, and there's, there's nothing real about this. Like, Kerry Washington goes home, and she's a completely different person from who Olivia Pope is. Wow. As opposed to these other women who are on reality shows, although, yes, there's some editing and some scripted stuff that gets put in there, but a lot of it is who they really are, and they're being, I feel like, subjected in a way that I don't necessarily agree with. But that anyway, that's a whole other <laughs> show. We can do like a whole show on that. Yeah, and I'm trying to change that. And I'm trying to change that. You'll see some stuff coming out, and I'm trying to change that. You know? Yes, with your yeah. drama series. And yeah. guys, I mean, like I said at the top of the show, make sure you check out Kirshen Jones. It's you have to. Www. Who I Am series. He has the coolest shirts. I can't wait till you send me mine. Yeah. What size are you? What size are you? <laughs> what size shirt do you wear? I'm I'm a small, you know. I'm, okay. I'm a petite girl, so. You guys... I'll send you one. I'll send you one tomorrow, Monday. Fabulous. So I'm gonna have my Who I Am shirt. Okay. Um, I'll definitely wear it for one of my episodes um, here on Sally's Hangout, cause you know, Sally's Hangout is gonna go through some changes. It's gonna be amazing, but I'm I'm excited to continue to support one another. I'm excited to do my story. I can't wait to like come on the show and hey, don't play with me because I'll be out there this weekend. I'll be out there this weekend. Nope. Well, maybe that was it. I tell my wife, hey, you'll be she, she in Puerto Rico this week. So <laughs> she <laughs> she's out of town. Hey, she in Puerto Rico this week, so I will be there. You ready? Just let me know I'm just playing. Yeah, just let me know when you're ready to tell it, you know? And I'm I'll, I'll be glad to share it. So what's what's I mean, I know you said you have the the drama web series coming up. You have this whole other movement of the snippets of you are like the shorter version of who I am series. But what do you? What's next for you? Like you have all um, these things happening in your life. Like three major projects. Like yeah. what's next? So right now for the Who I Am series, we are incorporating a big tour right now. We're going to colleges, high schools, elementary schools, YMCA, Boys and Girls Club. Yeah, so right now, shout out to Ashley Nicole. Like I said before, my wife, Shamisia Jones. Um, my, my friend, Anthony. Um, call him King. Um, he's being on, he's going to be on the tour, too, as well. And we're really going to these schools and implementing. It's called If You Only Knew Me, the national initiative. So we're doing workshops. We're doing different presentation. We're showing, we're telling people, your story matters. You know, your story matters. And we're showing you how you can take your story and you can touch a nation. So we got all these great things incorporated, music, incorporated, drama, incorporated, all these different things that we're doing right now. So that's one big thing that uh, we're implementing right now. So you will see that. And hopefully I can get a lot of people involved with it, you know, have a, a couple, um, 
you know, you know, famous people come along, you know, they'd be able to do that because that's the connection that um uh that's the connection I'm trying to build right now. So um that's one big thing. Uh as well, like you said, the drama web web series is a Kickstarter project. So once I release a Kickstarter, I want we you already know how people know about Kickstarter, raising the funds. We're not raising that much, it's raising the funds and I got some um Ah, I got some amazing cast. <laughs> I got a uh, uh, I tell you a little bit. My my good friend Mark John Jeffrey is gonna be starring. In it. Uh, so you guys will see him, and this is a lot of things that we're uh, we're working on. And I got a great great cast. I have a great cast that's gonna be there, and extra other people that's gonna be helping along too. You know what I mean? But other than that, that's one thing. And I'm just trying to graduate. Um and. <laughs> So I, can, school. <laughs> so I can be able to go back out there and act and do what I want because I was I love that. I'm lost without it. And I'm glad that God gave me this Who I Am series because that's what's filling me right now because nobody had, I can't wait to act. That's my next big thing. People will see me everywhere acting, auditioning, putting myself out there, but it doesn't stop me from doing what I need to do. I just don't put myself in a box. They said, Kersian, who are you? Um... I'm becoming a director, <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm an actor. I'm a counselor, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that's all the new things coming up. It's the big Who I Am series tour that we're doing right now, and it's going to be dynamic, and I can't wait to people get involved with it and be around it. My drama series, I'm working very hard. I'm trying to get more people involved with it, you know, and I'm a, but I understand it takes work. It takes work. You know, it takes big, big work. So that's one big thing, and, um, like I said, me getting back into the, the industry as in auditioning so people can see my face and things. So they were mostly big things that is going on right now. And collabing with you and collabing everybody in New York and collabing people there. Have a big move. I just have to move to Texas now in two weeks. I'm moving to Texas. So that's a big move too, but people will see me. The, um, December 13th was I'll be living in Kansas City for good um, until I'm coming back because we're shooting a series here. The drama web series is going to be based out of Kansas City, so people will be flying in. And everything of that sort, but um, but yeah, that's that's mostly the big things, and I'm just I'm really implementing um, another thing since you're asking me this. We have the Who I Am series presents Why I Teach. So I, I've been going to different schools, getting stories from teachers. So during the tour, once we release the tour, I'll be releasing those videos. You know, I'll be releasing those videos and have a nice little promo video for that and you see all these different doctors from different schools and you know teachers from elementary schools I got to go into the classroom and I got to sit down other than the tour I'm going to do I got to sit down with the teacher and hear their story five minute why the reason why just like the I am who I am because um, same thing it's just why I teach you know so it's really sitting down five minute seven minute video of them saying how they started why they doing it what makes them different what makes them drive so same thing around the who I am series telling stories it's just different things. So that's next year. Very busy, busy, busy. I love it. You know, so. I love it so much, and I love it so much too because it's really like this full circle. Because if you, you know, you think about it, like there are actors who talk about their educators, their teachers, whether it's negative or positive. Yeah. You know, they had that one teacher that inspired them, mm -hmm. believed in them told them that they'd make it, or they had their one teacher that said, you never, you know, Will Smith talks about that a lot too, you know, he talks, he's such a positive brother, and he talks about that teacher who told him, you never be anything, you'll never make it in this business, and that one teacher changed his whole life, it became his motivation, you know, the, the fire under him that said, you know, I'm, I'm not going to be anything that this man said, so you know, I think it's just, again, like you said, beautiful, you know, these stories, to tell people stories on all levels, I think it's always important because we can't wait until they become a Will Smith and Oprah, you know, for us to be invested or care about people's stories. We need to care about everyone's stories because we're all connected. You know, we're all one world. One, yeah. you know, we have our differences, and there's all these things about people not connecting, but we connect on one level. You know, the human race. You know, like we're human beings, and we just have to love one another and be better and spread love you know that's that's what it really needs to be about you know I work at it every day on yeah. you know being a better person and being mindful of just pouring out that good energy for people because like you said you just don't know how far it's gonna go um, 
So I want you guys to stay tuned for everything that's happening um, at Sally's Hangout and Who I Am series. Um, make sure you follow us at Sally Hangout, but I also want you guys to stay in touch with Kirshen Jones because he's an amazing brother. So I want, um, as we're wrapping up and getting close to the end of Sally's Hangout, Kirshen, why don't you tell everyone how they can follow you on your social okay. media, how they can be in touch with you. What if what if one of my viewers want to come on the Who I Am series? How oh. can you be a part of the show? So you can follow me on Twitter, the real RSO, and that's just the real, and then RSO is R S O U L. I'm the real RSO. You can follow us on at Who I Am series. That's on Twitter. That's on Instagram. Um, you can go to the website, um, www.whoiamseries.com. There's a tab on there to connect. You can share your story because I have different avenues sharing it through video or sharing it through a story, you know? And I post these sort of things. So on, on the website, you have a little section where you can tell a little story or you just say contact me or whatever. Or you can email us at, at whoiamseries, whoiamseries at gmail.com. We have Facebook as well. Make sure you like the page, like the page. Um, who I am series, that's all space, just like you're spelling it, not all together like the um, tags or anything like that. Um, it's who I am series. You can look it up and you can like the page and everything. So you can email me, you know, who I am series at gmail.com. I am accessible. I email back, you know, and I would love to share your story, but just follow us. Follow us on Twitter, you know, Instagram. Follow me. You know, follow me. And I just have to say before we wrap up I love you, my wife. My heart, my life. I love you, Shermicia Jones. If people know who they are, I give a shout out to my team: Ashley Nicole, Sarah Fletcher, Courtney Brown. That just came on as a PR. She's amazing. She is such an amazing person. And everybody else that's involved. Um, to my parents, that's another story. I got parents, a Caucasian family that took me in when I was a junior year in high school. Um, you ever seen the movie Blindside? That's like my life. <laughs> so. Um, that's another thing we're going to show. I can tell you more about my whole entire story. Eventually, I get on something um, that's Coach and Pam. That's Robert McPhee, Pam McPhee, my sister Kyle McPhee, my brother James, that's my biological brother, my sister Jamina. All these people that have been by my side, and they will see I will be able to bless them extraordinarily, you know what I mean, in the next year or so. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I say you can contact me, you can contact me um, and just, just be a part. Just be a part. It takes one tweet. You know, one follow. You know, we, we need to just build up our community as a whole, you know, as a human race. So um, everything I do is for ministry. So <clears throat> I'm always going to show the love. I'm always going to show the love. Contact, contact me. Contact me. I love to contact me. <laughs> contact me. You know, so. Yeah, shout out to Square Bear. Square Bear, I have it on. Yes, he does have it on. He's representing. I just, again, I, I want to thank you so much for, you know, taking the time for hanging out with me here yeah. on Sully's Hangout all the way from Kansas City. And, yeah. yeah, I mean, we've been trying to connect. We've both been super busy. But, you know, the greater higher power has a way of doing things right on time. So, yeah. you know, um, this is supposed to happen when it was supposed to happen. So I'm glad that we were able to get you on the show mm -hmm. and when we were able to. And I'm just so, so thankful for this new seed in my garden that, you know, will be watered and will grow. Like I said, folks out there, you know, plant some really, really good seeds and watch your garden truly grow because I will tell you everything that has happened in my career. And people will tell you that all the time. You get to a point where you audition less. You book work straight from word of mouth. People who yeah. speak well of you, highly of you, that know of you, know of your talent. And they say it's who you know, but it's, Honestly, who knows you? you yeah, know, when people exactly. start knowing who you are, you know, back to the who I yeah. am, when people start really knowing who you are, yeah. uh, then people will talk. You know, people talk, yeah. and news spreads really fast. And so um, always be, you know, at home when you look in the mirror, ask yourself, what do you want people to say about you, you know? What is it that you truly want people to say when you're not around? Because, you know, in your face, people are going to tell you what you want to hear. It's part of the business, you know? <laughs> but, like, when you're no longer around, what is it that you truly want people to be able to say about who you are and what kind of values you hold and what kind of artist and person you want to be? So mm -hmm. I want to thank everyone out there that has supported Sally's Hangout throughout 
this journey. I want to thank everyone in advance for supporting Curzon Jones. Make sure you support him. Um, and I just, I'm like, I lost for words. I'm overwhelmed with, you know, the joy of what is happening. You know, Sally's Hangout has truly been a blessing to be able to do every week. Uh, I'm doing a special Sunday episode because, you know, we got real life problems out here. Bills yeah. got to be paid, you know. <laughs> And I work a job that doesn't yeah. necessarily care or understand that I have a Sally Hangout episode to do every Monday night. So I've been working Monday nights lately, so the schedule's been a little crazy, but I have to make sure that I still, you know, show up and that I'm here for you guys because as much as sometimes we ourselves, I'm sure you, Christian, you can relate. There are times where you might not want to do the Who I Am series, you know, like... Life is in the way, and <laughs> <laughs> you know there are days where like, man, this is a lot of work. Um, <laughs> and you kind of just give it up, you know. Yeah, you don't want to do it, but you start really touching people, and you realize this is bigger than you. And and exactly. there are people that really, again, like you said, some people are entertained by other things. So I don't take for granted at all that people take the time to really watch this yeah. show for a whole hour. Like <laughs> it's, it's a long time to sit and watch a show. So. I, I'm very appreciative of your time and and of your support. So if you loved this episode, please, please tweet me at Sally Hangout. Tweet Kersion. Follow him. I already tweeted yeah. him from the Sally Hangout page. So make sure you follow him at the Real Royal Jones. Um, and yeah, I'll see you guys next week. Um, give you guys. Uh, I don't even know what I'm doing next week. November is gonna be <laughs> a month of surprises. Like Happy birthday, birthday month. Birthday month. We have you, we're over what in two minutes? Yeah. Two minutes. Two minutes. Gotta get some plugs. Got some plugs for people. <laughs> My brother and them this release date album, Christian record label. It's called Um Game Time. You guys check that out. Uh they have a they're number six on the billboards right yeah, now. I was gonna say they're on the billboard yeah. chart. The billboards right now, you guys check that out. If this is released, I'll put it on my page, my Twitter. Um, Christ Gang, you know, and you guys do that. I just want to say I love to my mother-in-law. She just had a serious surgery Friday, and she's healing right now back home in Colorado. I want to say get better, and I love you, and I'll see you soon around Thanksgiving. And I just want to say thank you to all my supporters and all my followers. Make sure y'all follow Sally's Hangout. I will blow you guys up page if you do not do this. This is a big honor to be on her show right now thank to you. do this. And watch every other episode. You got time. You got time to do it. You watch a scandal. You watch The Walking Dead in 30 Walking minutes. Yeah, so, but yeah, thank you. Thank you, Sally. Thank You're you. welcome. This has been a blessing and a pleasure. Um, you are such a beautiful soul and a beautiful spirit. I, you know, I can't even... We're going to have to like talk offline because I, I'll talk all day about how yeah. um, moved and inspired I am by your movement. And any way that I can support, um, I will. Know that Sally's Hangout is your hangout. Um, any future episode you want to come on, comment, be a part of it, you're Thanks. always welcome. So, you Thanks. know, we're doing, we're, we're, we're doing this together. We're in it together. And hopefully I, can, hopefully I can get you on my drama web series if you don't cost too much. You know, I'm not I'm not on that Denzel new money you know, yet. So I, I think I think I think we're gonna be all right. <laughs> you know <laughs> the hits, hits the pockets that I don't have yet. <laughs> Yeah, but thank you. Thank you so much. Thank You're you. welcome. And thank you, everyone out there in the cyber world that continues to support Sally's Hangout. We'll see you next week. Um, make sure you check out www.sallytheactress.com. Um, I'm going to be sending out some stuff, so you know, just stay tuned. That's all I can really say. It's going to be a, it's going to be a good month. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.